What's going on guys? My name is Drake and welcome to day two of the 12 days of Christmas where we're going to be writing our very own Christmas song. Uh, if you haven't seen day one yet, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Go ahead and go check that out. Uh, but we're going to jump right in. We're going to be working on our chord progression for our song today. And uh, as you can see, I've got FL Studio open. Uh, we're going to be working with eight measures in 4-4 four, four time, uh, 160 beats per minute. And we're in the D Dorian scale for this song, so we're going to actually just put this D here so that's a reference. Um, and the first step we're going to do to writing a chord progression is creating a polyrhythm. And that's basically just subdividing um, our full eight measures down into more digestible pieces. Uh, because we don't want to play one whole chord for eight measures, that would be ridiculous. Uh, and this is also going to create a little bit of syncopation for our song, too. So. Um, the way you can do this is kind of just take the number 8 and just break it down however you want to. Uh, normally people would just break it down into 8 sets of 1 where you play 1 chord each measure. Uh, we're not going to do that, we're going to do it differently. So let's actually start by breaking 8 down into 3, 2, and 3. Um, so we're going to be playing for 3 measures this first chord, 3 measures on the last chord, and then 2 measures for this middle chord here. And let's just listen to that. And already you can see that first note is held out way too long because we're at 160 beats per minute and that's pretty fast um, but it sounds super drawn out so we're actually going to divide it up a little bit more um, so let's take a look at this three measure first note right so let's actually subdivide that one again too um, and you can either do that in terms of measures right here we can do one 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 measure or we can look at it as half notes and there'll be six half notes or we can look at it in quarter notes and there'll be 12 of those. Um, I'm actually going to look at it as half notes and we'll do 4 and 2 for the 6, uh, which would be the same thing as doing 2 and 1 for the measures. Um, so we're going to cut that right there and we're actually going to cut it symmetrically right here on the other one that's 3 measures long. So let's see if that sounds any better. So it sounds a little bit better, but we still kind of want a little bit more bounce because this is a Christmas song. It's going to be a little bit uplifting. So let's actually look at these two length ones again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this as half notes, and I'm actually going to subdivide it into three and one this time because there's four half notes. So I'm going to cut it right here, and then I'm going to keep it symmetrical on this other one that's two measures long and cut the same. Um, but I'm actually going to leave this two measure length one that, as it is just to create a little bit of asymmetry now um, because we've already got a little bit of a motif rhythmically going. Uh, let's see how that sounds. I actually like that a lot better and I think we're going to stick with that for the rhythm. Um, it sounds kind of like bells chiming to me, it makes me think of like a Christmas feeling. So the next thing we're going to do is step two. We're going to move these notes so that it creates a little bit of a melody because playing just the D minor chord over and over again would be very repetitive and boring. So we actually want it to be a little bit happy because it's it's Christmas song, so we want it to be uplifting. So we want to kind of go for major intervals or perfect intervals. Um, so I'm going to use this first one right here to hit that A so that it'll uh, be a perfect fifth from the D. Um, and the really best way to do this is to just kind of listen along while you're moving the notes to see like, kind of what you want it to sound like. So let's take a listen. Um, so also we want this first note to be D because um, we want to establish that it is in D Dorian. Um, and we also probably want the longest chord to also be a D. So we're going to use this one as a D also. We're just going to set that as it is um, and after I hear this I kind of want it to go down a little bit but not all the way back down to a D so I'm going to go to the fourth of the scale which is the G um, and then we'll go back to the A and let's go to the seventh and see how that sounds I'm thinking maybe we should move this G 
Let's see how it sounds on an F. Now that's a minor interval, so it's going to sound a little sad, and I'm not sure if that's the, really the goal here. So let's try a B. I like the B, but it makes it sound um, com it makes it sound incomplete when it goes back down to the D. So we're actually just going to stick with the G, and we will move this D right here up to an A, so that it has a cadence going from the A to the D. So then we can move on to step three, which is just drawing the chords above our root notes. So we're going to just put this F, A, uh, C over the A, move up here and go to the E, G to B, to D, A again to C and E, we're getting an A minor chord, and then we got a C that it's actually going to go up to a and a G creating a C major chord and we got another D that's going to go to F and A D minor chord and C and an E above A make another A minor alright so let's see how that sounds sounds super choppy, right? Which is going to bring us to our fourth step. And this is going to be just creating inversions. Um, so as you can see, the root note here of D minor jumping up to A, uh, there's actually this A that connects them, which is good. We want it to kind of flow into the next chord, and that A is a really good way to do it. Um, but the problem here is that there's two notes below that A on the D, and there's two notes above that A on the A minor chord. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to invert this A minor to an A minor over E so that it flows a little bit more smoothly in between the chords. And we kind of want to do that for all of them. Um, so we're going to actually take this D and go down. We're going to take this E down and then both of these. And you kind of just do this throughout the whole thing. Now let's see how that sounds. So that sounds a lot better, it flows a lot nicer, um, but there's still a little bit of a problem. Uh, some of these chords aren't connected by like a note like this, um, A here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create suspensions. Um, and a good way to do that is pretty simple. Um, let's just take this first one here from the A minor to the G major. Um, it's super easy to do this, we kind of just let this bleed over a little bit into this chord, and we shorten that note right there. So let's just see how that sounds. Yeah, so it sounds pretty nice when you do that kind of thing. Um, you can do that a lot of different ways. You could even make it, um, you could either chop this note in half and make, move it down to the G here. That way you can still keep it on the time if you wanted. I'm actually going to stick with that A leading into the next chord. And so with this we created a, like a motif, which is a little short musical idea. And we can use that again in these other, um, these other chords that need this. So we're just going to use that same idea here. And we're just going to make it bleed over just a little bit in the next one. And we're going to do it again right here. And this one has a connecting, so we're actually going to leave that as it is. And let's listen to how that sounds. So 
So I like that a lot, and um, we're gonna leave it at that for the chord progression for day two. Uh, make sure to tune in tomorrow for day three of the 12 Days of Christmas where we're writing our very own Christmas song. Uh, if you've learned anything today, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, um, let me know about what you think of this method, and uh, let me know if there's any tips you have for writing chord progressions, um, and I'll see you tomorrow.